Good afternoon, everybody. I am new to this whole video thing here and information as far as posting videos of myself. Not something I've ever done before. However, my husband and family members have encouraged me to do so because for the last two years, I am always watching videos and reading every article and every video and every comment I could find on dentures and all on fours and extractions, implants, all of that. That said, <clears throat> I literally do every night look for a new video, a new comment on any of the videos I've already seen, just always researching. Um, that said, the topic of this video is research. I'll get into others little by little down the road. I first did a video, I didn't post it, and I think I tried to cover everything in one video and I thought, well, you know, that's gonna raise a lot of questions. So I think I'll just start off with the beginning, which is what I did before I started my process, actually two years ago. And this is titled research because I thought I had done a significant amount of research, however, my first go round um, failed. So here we are. Um, 2017, June 9th, I went and I had 13 teeth extracted. Four on top here. I had had a partial since around, I want to say, 03, 04. And I had crowns up here. And I had some teeth here, but keeping up was a task, nothing really much to chew on back here. <clears throat> that said, I had done some research, what I thought was pretty significant. I mean, it was six months worth. Um, I know that I was excited and I wanted to get the ball rolling as well. Um, with research, <clears throat> you really wanna look at the qualifications. I know a big mistake I made, I thought having worked in the medical field, um, I had thought that dentists were required to get their qualifications the same way doctors were. Yeah, no. No, not at all. They actually can go sit in a room and watch uh, a qualified dentist talk about implants or crowns or whatever and suddenly they are qualified. The other thing I didn't realize was a lot of these franchise, now what I mean by franchise dentists is the ones that have the labs in them. <clears throat> <clears throat> For example, uh, affordable dentures, there's one. And I can speak about the one that I went to June 9th of 2017 in Florida that when I went in to have the extractions, the dentist was in there with one of the dental assistants. I was put under IV sedation, which was propothal, fentanyl, and Versed. That's pretty much standard. There was no oral surgeon in there. Now, an oral surgeon is qualified uh, to put people to sleep much more qualified. Um, the only thing better than having an oral surgeon when you are sedated in any way is an anesthesiologist. Um, there are a lot of underlying health issues that oral surgeons go to school to learn about that could happen or take place when a patient is sedated that a dentist does not, unless maybe he sat in a classroom for 15 minutes and listened to someone talk about it. That said, <clears throat> And if you are having something like this done, you, if you've never been put under IV sedation, um, you don't even know what to expect, you know, what's, what's gonna happen while you're under. Such is the case with me. I feel like I need to touch base on this because after I had awoken, they had extract, extracted 13 of my teeth and woke me up and stuck temporary dentures in my mouth. 
um, on the bottom I had had the abutments already. So it was one whole thing, extractions, implants, abutments, four, four implants. My husband, I was in the truck and I was sitting in passenger seat, drugged and ice and he's driving and it's a two and a half hour drive home. And thank the Lord that he kept calling my name, but I wasn't answering him. <clears throat> my eyes were wide open. I could hear him, but I couldn't move. I couldn't talk. And most importantly, I couldn't breathe. He noticed, pulled over, sat me up, and like hugged me, and I let out a gasp and took a big breath of air. Yeah, that was pretty scary. So, um, so do your research. I want to stay on topic here. You want to look at oral surgeons. They are far more qualified um, to do your implants, your abutments, anything like that. They know what to look for with your blood pressure and things of that nature. So I highly recommend, yeah, you might pay a little more. I, I get it, I do, but in the end, you know what? You can go and do it like I did the first time, which failed, by the way. I'm on my second go, um, somewhere else, of course. You can do that, and you know, I hope it goes well for you, but if there's any underlining issues that you have and you may not know about because you've never done this before, do you really want to risk it? I mean, because in the end, the money I saved doing it the first go round through affordable dentures, and then now what I'm spending now to have it done, the difference I spent that having another oral surgeon remove my previous implants from affordable dentures because they failed and it was to no fault of my own. It was the type of irrigation they used that wasn't significant or substantial enough and they burned my bone, killing it. So, you know, you really wanna outweigh it. Okay, yeah, it was less than this go round, but I'm on two years now of not having any teeth here. So it's depressing and believe it or not, you'll gain weight because you can't really chew your food so you eat a lot more carbs but <clears throat> don't want to get off track. The ideal thing, in, in my opinion, is to find a cosmetic dentist, someone who um, takes a lot of pride in their work and making people look beautiful. Um, because after all, isn't that what we all want, really? A smile is the first thing you notice on someone and you only get one chance to make a first impression. So there's no vanity here. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but if it was a struggle all you ever wanted to do was be able to smile you know um, take family photos smile at happy moments you know in your life and with your family so I found after doing a lot more research that I should find a cosmetic dentist who has worked with an oral surgeon um, where they speak to each other and they get together and talk about the patient not working out of the same facility but they correspond daily. And the cosmetic dentist I found has worked with a phenomenal oral surgeon for years. Um, and now they did tell me going in, um, it was gonna be a lengthy process. But I really, at that time, I was like, it doesn't matter, I just want it done right. So you wanna do that research. Uh, you want to look into implants. You want to look into whether you're getting the snap-ons. You have that option. You have the bar retained. And then you have the screw-ins now, um, which are quite pricier. Um, but however, they're beautiful. I mean, they're phenomenal too. It's, it's all up to you. Um, you want to look at, you know, make sure they take good x-rays and um, find out if you have significant bone to do the implants <clears throat> or if you have bone loss and then you, you want to research bone grafting. Um, you want to talk about the time frame, every, every step I know um, from having the surgery to have the implants and then how long to the next surgery to um, have the abutments put in. And those are the little things that go on top. Now we're talking regular size implants here. Implants, mini implants are different. They're half the size. You need two minis to every one standard size implant. And they uh, are different on top. It's a little bit less invasive, uh, of course, because a larger hole has to be made in your jaw 
for the standard size, which of course, um, more support. One standard is equivalent to two of the minis, like I said. So these are things you wanna look at. Um, minis are also, if you do have significant bone loss, you may have, instead of the grafting, you may choose to go with the minis. Now keep in mind, the price is less, but you have to have two to one. So you're going to need more. I will tell you that after doing research online, um, I have found that since the minis, I, I've read on here, it says since the minis are significantly smaller in diameter than traditional, um, the standard posts range from 3.5 millimeters to 6 millimeters, and a mini implant can be anywhere from 2 millimeters to 3.5. That said, as a result, minis can pose a higher risk of implant failure. Keep that in mind. Does that mean they're going to fail? No, no, but they, it says it can pose. Um, so do your research on that. Um, when you speak to the cosmetic dentist and the oral surgeon, you want to find out if they guarantee their work. Um, if something happens, are they going to go back and take care of it? Um, things like that. And there are things that can happen that you don't even know about because you've never done this before. Now I'm on my second go. Um, there are some things that I know that can happen, such as when I went to the cosmetic dentist to have my abutments removed, she was going to measure for my locators to be put in, which those are the final things that go in that your dentures snap onto. Um, she went to remove an abutment and I just felt a zap up into my head like I was being electrocuted um, and I she stopped immediately and I said I don't know what that is she said can you still feel it I said yeah it, it you know throughout the course of the day it continued it dulled but it just like didn't feel right didn't feel good um, she immediately called the oral surgeon and talked to her and the oral surgeon <clears throat> was able to um, get me in, I think the next day. And again, because no discomfort, um, she sedated me and she removed that abutment as well as all the others to check. And sure enough, my dentist had told me that there's a possibility that there was some bone growth between, your, between my uh, implant and the abutment in there. And sure enough, and so when she tried to turn it, of course, it, that bone is going to pinch. So she fixed that up. So these are some things that you don't even know um, exist or that they even happen. So there again, research, research, research. Um, so you want to make sure that also I know from watching other people's videos, there's some really good ones on here. Um, one lady, I won't mention her name because I, I don't have permission. Um, she had said, you know, when you go for a consultation to have this done, make sure that they're going to include like a reline because a lot of these, especially for mini implants, um, you get them right away. And over time, your gums are going to shrink. You know, they're not going to be swollen anymore um, in a few months. And so is that reline covered? Because that can be pricey um, if you don't have insurance and even if you do. So I did learn that from her. I'm very grateful. Um, again, and then like your research, if you're going to have the mini implants, they say it's cheaper to go to Mexico and have that done. And I've seen some beautiful teeth come out of there. However, I've also read enough to know that there is a language barrier. Now, when you're having things done, that's fine. But when you want to ask them, maybe like, well, will that bone growth? Are you going to sedate? You know, there's a language barrier. And then at that point, it becomes very frustrating and you don't know if you're explaining yourself right and I've heard people talk about that as well so something to keep in mind major barrier um, <clears throat> so just watch the videos read the comments um, there's a site called real self and there's people that share their experiences with all sorts of surgeries and there's comments and a lot of support on there um, I I've gone on there. I like that. I, I, I read those articles as well. So that said, um, I think that's mainly what I wanted to get across was just do a lot of research because the time is it, so important. I, I can't even tell you. It's been, it's depressing. It's very sad. You lose motivation um, because it is a lengthy process and you go from looking even if you didn't like your teeth, your face ages drastically when you don't have any in your mouth, um, such as 
which is the case with me right now. However, uh, that said, I am already up to the point where I did my wax bite and Thursday I go for my wax try-ins. Now the wax bite is a plain wax block where they get everything measured, the center line, um, the thickness that you want for more top lip and here and it evens out your jaw, things like that. They send that off and then the lab makes the wax try-ins which are going to look like my final teeth. They have the teeth on them and everything, the color, everything. So I'm, I'm finally gonna get to see what I'm going to look like with the final set. And also it's where we make any last minute um, decisions, altercation, you know, or changes or anything like that. Make sure everything is aesthetically pleasing um, and feels right and comfortable. Now, at this point, I will tell you, you're gonna get very anxious, very excited. Um, be prepared for disappointment. Um, just in case and don't be afraid to speak up if something doesn't feel right looks a little off Things like that say it. Yeah, it might take a little longer, but really at this point I Started this my second go around in April of last year Okay, so I'm gonna keep posting um, different things here and you can follow my story um, so that's it. That's where you want to start with your research. Lots and lots of research. If you have any questions or comments, um, post them below. Please subscribe. Um, I am plan to continue making videos. Um, if you have a suggestion as what you'd like my next one to be, I was thinking I was going to explain what happened with my teeth on the next video and what transpired my first go around with this. So that would kind of open your eyes as to what not to do. So have a great day. Um, smile anyway. So they're contagious. Uh, again, any questions, post them below. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye-bye.